Hey, Dr. K. Yeah? This um, Quaker is missing his entire beak. Oh, no. When did this happen? I don't know what to think. I don't know what happened. I can't imagine how it happened. There was no blood. He kept doing this with his tongue because he had no beak over it, so you kept seeing the tongue, his little beige tongue. So I think he's going to have to eat soft food if, please God, he should be well. He's a nice little bird, you know. He's a sweet little bird. So I just am hoping Dr. K can do some magic. I don't know what kind of magic. I don't know. Uh, Gertie. I'm kind of afraid to hear what she has to say. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa, whoa. I, I don't know. He flew over. And then I was like, oh my god, his nose is missing. Like, his beak, it's cracked off. This is really bad. Quincy's owner, Sarah, didn't see exactly what happened when Quincy's beak was ripped off. It basically takes quite a bit of force to have a bird's beak ripped off like this. The most likely scenario when this type of thing happens is when a big bird attacks a little bird. For a person, I think it might be analogous to getting your nose or your ear ripped off or a nail pulled out, perhaps. I mean, this is some serious force and trauma that happened to this little bird. The good news is he can live with this, but the okay. bad news is there's no replacing the upper beak. It no. won't grow back? Not when this much tissue is missing and this far back. I mean, it's not bleeding. Fortunately, they clot very, very quickly. So what I would probably need to do is tube feed him. Unfortunately, that damage is permanent. There is not even remotely any tissue to put together. There's no prosthetic that would stay on a bird this small when there's nothing to even to attach it to. Best case scenario is that over time, it just gets a whole new skin layer over it. What we basically have to do is just treat this as an open wound, tube feed him, get his pain managed, and then eventually he just has to learn to eat with the bottom beak. I've got a couple bird patients who had you know, traumatic amputation of the upper beak by another bird, and they manage by eating the Harrison's mash. They're able to scoop it up uh -huh. with their bottom beak. Okay. But it takes him a while to learn how to do that. First thing we need to do is just, you know, get him over this trauma. And mm -hmm. there, there's even a chance we could lose him. Okay. Oh my God. I got Quincy from Nature Center. Someone brought him in from the Everglades. He couldn't walk. He was missing a piece of toe. I mean, he was really, he was about four months old when I got him. So, and we, and we couldn't release him. Okay. Here's a sad story. But guy like he, like he likes to be held yeah and he likes to be pet oh you poor little thing he's not he's not a bird that's gonna bite you or whatever when i get a case like this the biggest thing is i'm worried about is this patient going into shock how much blood they may have lost during the trauma and these are things that i need to address um very quickly because i could lose this bird my goal with him is just to hopefully get him eating on his own. This is a really, really traumatic injury. It's a shame he's a sweet little bird. Oh my I'm gosh. I'm gonna just send you back to the incubator. All right, can you pop him back in? After everything he went through and he's been doing so well for three years, that would be so sad. It just would be really, really sad. Quincy will remain in the hospital for a day of critical care and hand feeding.